Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the key tactical themes in Chelsea's narrow European Super Cup win over Villarreal. So when we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Chelsea in a 3-4-2-1, and then we see Villarreal on the board in a 4-4-2. That was supposed to be how they lined up on paper, but what we ended up seeing from Villarreal was that they did play in a hybrid system. Without the ball, they did shift into more of a 5-3-2 with Pau Torres, Raul Albiol, and Foyt being the center backs. And then you had Jeremy and Pedraza in those wing back roles while Alberto Moreno played as a left shuttling midfielder. What you ended up seeing was that when they did win the ball, Pedraza was pushing higher up the pitch. Alberto Moreno was initially dropping off into an inside left position to provide cover. But then you would see him shifting forward to join the attack. And that's when Villarreal did look like more of a 3-2-5 in possession. Nevertheless, you could make a case that this was a game of two halves. And initially it was Chelsea creating several issues for Villarreal. What their approach was against this 5-3-2 that did sit off was that you ended up having Havertz, Werner, and Ziyech occupying the center backs, and Chelsea were trying to get hudson Adoy and Marcus Alonso to peg back Jeremy and Pedraza, and then make runs in behind to break into those half spaces. So what you ended up seeing was that Ziyech was occupying Pau Torres, you had Havertz ahead of Foyth, and then Werner was in that gap between Raul Albiol and Torres. So what we often saw was that Havertz and Werner were making runs to drag away Raul Albiol and Foyth, and then Ziyech was occupying Torres or sitting in that Torres-Pedraza gap. That's where you would see hudson Adoy as the spare man on the touchline. And then here you could see Kovacic receiving the ball in an inside left position and focus on the positioning of the Chelsea front three. Werner's looking to make a run in between Raul Albiol and Foyth. Havertz is occupying Raul Albiol, and then you can see Ziyech in that gap between Pedraza and Pau Torres. Kovacic looks to clip a long diagonal ball into the path of hudson Adoy, who's unmarked, and while it flies over Pedraza, look at Werner dragging away Raul Albiol, and Havertz has a free run towards goal as Foyth isn't picking him up. However, hudson Adoy can only desperately lunge at the ball, and his pullback's cleared by Pau Torres. And the same thing was applicable on the opposite flank as Alonso was looking to make runs in behind Jeremy to break in towards goal. Here you can see third, and that's where you see Werner dropping off deeper to pull away Foyth. And with Trigueros not applying pressure, Rudiger looks to split Trigueros and Foyth and slide the ball in between Jeremy and Raul Albiol for Marcus Alonso breaking off the wing back into left half space. Alonso does well to shrug off Jeremy, but he fires a low cross through the 6 yard box. If we focus on hudson Adoy's flank, if he did receive the ball on the touchline, that's where you would see Alberto Moreno dropping off deeper to create 1v2 situations with Pedraza, because on the rare occasion where Villarreal were pressing from the front, then you would have Alberto Moreno pushing forward to close down Chalaba. But for the most part in that opening half, they were in a deep 5-3-2, so Moreno was dropping off to help out with hudson Adoy. Meanwhile, on the opposite flank, Chelsea were trying to get Timo Werner into those gaps of space in the left channel. So what you often saw was Havertz dropping off deeper to pull out Foyth. And then Werner would make those runs across Raul Albiol to look to receive the ball in the left channel to break towards goal. Havertz's movement in that opening period was integral to Werner getting into those high quality positions. But unfortunately for Thomas Tuchel, Timo Werner was unable to make an impact in the final third. If we look to an example, it's Rudiger sliding the ball to Alonso when he pulls out Jeremy. But focus on Havertz's movement into the left channel to pull away Foyth. And that leaves Werner free in a huge gap as Foyth is pulled out of position. Alonso carries the ball across Jeremy, and he's looking to poke the ball into that center back gap, and it should place Werner free on goal to get a shot off. But when Alonso pokes that ball into the path of Werner, although he does receive the ball across Foyth, Raul Albiol does read the threat, and he gets across to force Werner towards the byline, and his pressure is good enough that Werner ends up carrying the ball out of play. The other key component to how Chelsea were successful in that opening half was that Nagolo Conte and Kovacic did a very good job, along with the center backs, of breaking up play when Villarreal were looking to break in transition. And to no surprise, when Kovacic and Conte were able to win the ball in Villarreal's third, they were able to help Chelsea break in transition 
position, and that resulted in their goal. In the build-up to Chelsea's opener, you could see Gerard Moreno receiving the ball from a clearance, and focus on Kovacic who's a few yards just in behind him. As that play develops, Kovacic does a very good job of tracking back, and he ends up poking the ball away from the Villarreal striker, and that allows Chelsea to break forward swiftly. If we speed up the play, what we end up seeing is that Alonso slides the ball across Jeremy into the path of Havertz who's making that run in between Foyth and Raul Albiol in the left channel. This is significant because when Havertz pulls away Raul Albiol and Foyth, you can see Werner getting goal side of Pau Torres and it leaves Ziyech free to break into the box as Pedraza's caught higher up the pitch. What's important here is that Havertz ends up getting the ball across those two defenders and Werner's run into the path of Ziyech and although he doesn't hit it properly, he's in a good position to put Chelsea up 1-0. Meanwhile, following Chelsea's opener, Villarreal were able to fight back into the game as Chelsea dropped off deeper and perhaps they were looking to break on the counterattack to add to their lead. But when they dropped off into their 5-4-1, they still should have been able to cope with Villarreal's attack. When you look at it, you would have Werner occupying the center back, then Ziyech and Havertz would be responsible for Torres and Foyth, and then in that midfield zone, it's still Conte and Kovacic against Kapu and Trigueros. Like I said earlier, what you ended up seeing from Villarreal was that they did push Pedraza and Jeremy higher up the pitch, because similar to how hudson Adoy and Alonso were looking to attack Pedraza and Jeremy, Unai Emery wanted his wingbacks to peg back the Chelsea wingbacks, and on paper, it was ideal for them to exploit space in behind hudson Adoy. But towards the end of that first half, what we ended up seeing was that Pau Torres and Foyth were providing penetration with their ball-carrying skills into Chelsea's half, and Chelsea struggled to cope with that threat, and that resulted in high-quality chances for Villarreal. Initially, you witnessed Trigueros receiving the ball near the halfway circle, and he looks to slide the ball into the path of Foyth, who bursts into Chelsea's half as Havertz is caught out of position. Trigueros squares that ball into the path of Foyth, and his only options moving forward is Dia in that gap between Zuma and Chaloba, or Jeremy in the right channel. Foyth opts to carry the ball forward beyond Havertz, and that's where you see Dia making a run in beyond Rudiger who does step late, and now all Chelsea can hope for is that Chaloba does track that movement. When that pass is played beyond Rudiger, you can see Chaloba and Alonso closing in on Dia, and they should be making a tackle that is successful, and they apply enough pressure in that moment to force a low save from Mendy. And lastly, you could see Foyth carrying the ball into Chelsea's half, and you have Pulisic shifting across as Chelsea are in their 5-4-1. As that play develops, Foyth ends up carrying the ball further, and this is where you do expect Pulisic to make a successful challenge, or at the very worst, foul the center back. You can see Kovacic and Alonso shifting across to provide cover for Trigueros and Jeremy, but Pulisic fails to make that challenge and he allows Foyt to drop the ball off to Jeremy. Jeremy drifts central and he drops off the ball into the path of Trigueros and you could see two Chelsea players being dragged into the path of Trigueros and from there you need Conte to shift across or Rudiger to step forward. Neither do when Trigueros bypasses Kovacic and Pulisic, and that creates a gap for Jeremy to poke the ball across a late-stepping Rudiger into the path of Gerard Moreno, who's shifting across Zuma. From this position, Zuma and Marcus Alonso have a 1v2 against Gerard Moreno, but none of them make a tackle. As Gerard Moreno carries the ball towards the byline, you could see Chalaba and hudson Adoy taken out of the game by Dia and Pedraza. And what you also see is neither Conte nor Havertz are picking up Jeremy's run into the box, but no one's also picking up Alberto Moreno who's free at the back post, and he ends up hitting the crossbar from Gerard Moreno's delivery. Then you could see Kapu receiving the ball from Raul Albiol, and he ends up pulling out Havertz as you end up seeing Villarreal shift into their 3-2-5 and Chelsea dropping off into their 5-4-1. When Kapu receives the ball, Havertz follows him into the halfway circle, and the only forward pass is into the path of Gerard Moreno, who's dropping off to pull out Zuma or Nagolo Conte. When that pass is played, Gerard Moreno identifies that Havertz is pulled out of position, and he plays a first-time ball backwards into the path of Pau Torres. 
when Pau Torres receives the ball now. You could see that neither Werner has shifted across, Havertz has caught out of position, and Conte was also pulled out of position as well. So that allows Pau Torres to carry the ball into Chelsea's third. And now you should focus on Trigueros who's beginning to make a run off of Kovacic. As Pau Torres carries the ball further, you end up seeing that run off Kovacic, but you can now see Dia shifting laterally to occupy Rudiger, and that creates a gap for Pau Torres to exploit if he's able to clip the ball into the box. Pau Torres tries to play that long ball into the unmarked run of Trigueros, but his pass is slightly overhit, and it allows Alonso to clear his lines for a corner. And then when you focus to the second half, you can say that Chelsea's shape was now more of a 5-2-3 with Pulisic and Havertz looking to be a bit higher up the pitch near Werner. And that's where you did see more of a pentagonal shape around Trigueros and Capu to ensure that they couldn't get on the ball in that midfield zone. Still, the pattern of the match followed a similar theme. Chelsea's sole outlet was trying to get long balls over the top from Zuma or Rudiger into the path of Alonso running off Yeremi, while Havertz was dropping off deeper. But on the rare occasion where Chelsea were able to break into space in transition, they often made the wrong decision in the final third. Therefore, with Villarreal having more possession in that second half, we're able to see more of that front two being able to operate in the manner that Unai Emery was expecting. Gerard Moreno would drop off deeper and look to link play and create that overload in that midfield zone, while Dia was occupying the center backs and looking to make runs into those gaps or out into the channel. Following a Rudiger giveaway to Gerard Moreno picking up the ball at the edge of the box, and he's approached by Kovacic and Rudiger and focus on Dia just ahead of Christensen. Gerard Moreno ends up splitting the two Chelsea players and playing the ball into Dia who does drag Christensen out of position, but that's when you end up seeing Gerard Moreno running off the two Chelsea players into the box unmarked. Dia notices that and he backheels the ball into the path of Gerard Moreno taking out Alonso and Christensen and it places the Villarreal striker in a position to equalize the game. Following a punt from the Villarreal goalkeeper, focus on Gerard Moreno stepping ahead of Rudiger to nod the ball in behind Marcus Alonso into the path of Jeremy. When Jeremy receives the ball, focus on how the play develops. He drags out Rudiger, but look at the space between Gerard Moreno and Jorginho, and then look at Estupanan making a run beyond Hudson Adoy while Dia occupies Chaloba. When Jeremy's pullback bypasses Kovacic and Alonso, Jorginho tries to step towards the path of Gerard Moreno, but look at Dia occupying two center backs and Gerard Moreno noticing Estupanan's run into left half space. He slides the ball into that zone, and from here the Villarreal substitute should force Mendy into a high quality save or equalize the game. But even with hudson Adoy unable to track back, he fires a powerful effort at the Chelsea goalkeeper. So as you could see, both managers identified effective methods to create high quality chances in the final third, and frankly poor execution played a key role in why this match was settled in a shootout.